thank you, Jesus, for everyone who clicks on this video. Holy Spirit, I ask that you speak to me and through me in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Now, um, in this video, I'm going to be very transparent because it is the only way that I even came into this revelation, you know, through a fall that I came into this revelation. As you can see by the title of this video, there are three steps to deliverance. And many people, I don't, I think many people actually know this to be true, what I'm about to say, but they don't actually know this, if you get what I'm saying. Um, and the reason I say that is because there's actually a Bible verse that I love. Like, I really, really love this verse. It's in the Proverbs. It says that deep counsel in a, in a man is, no, counsel, uh, deep counsel in a man's heart is like deep waters, but a man of understanding will draw it out. So what this means is a person can have counsel, right? A person can know something, but you don't fully understand it until you actually draw it out and really know it, right? So before I get into the revelation, I just want to speak on what did I do, right? I have fell at the end of 2022 going into the new year, uh, December like 30th and the 29th, two nights in a row. I had fell into masturbation, you know what I'm saying? The first night I did it, and you know what I'm saying? I just, I really tweaked, you know what I'm saying? The first night I tweaked, um, I wasn't satisfied when I did it and none of that. And then the next night, I purposely did it out of iniquity. Like, I, I went into that night, you know what I'm saying, knowing that I was going to do it again just to see. You know what I'm saying? Because I had fell into it the night before, and I was just really, really tripping, and I was tempted and I was just tripping, bro. You know what I'm saying? I fell into, I fell into sin. You feel me? But I, luckily, I understand. I've grown in my walk. Um, I understand that there is no condemnation for the righteous. I understand that a righteous man will fall seven times and he will get back up. You know what I'm saying? According to the Proverbs, I understand that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins. I understand. You know what I'm saying? That I am not penalized because of Christ. As a result, you know what I'm saying, for my sins and things like that. Um, but I have a true fear of God, you know what I'm saying? So I desire to truly turn away and never do that again. <clears throat> I feel blessed because this is a new year, you know what I'm saying? So I feel very refreshed. Um, the beginning of this year after I did that, I spent the whole week off of social media, off of everything. I just deleted everything and I was just really, really devoted and focusing on God to start this year off, you know what I'm saying? Especially after doing what I did, I really, really tweaked, you know what I'm saying? But I cannot go back um, on what I did. But what I can do is be honest and open with you guys, my my um, the people who follow me and stuff like that. Because I believe that, you know, it's good for me to come out and say these things. The the, the very next day after I did this, I, God made me expose myself to my mother. You know, I'm very close to my mom. She is a big reason why I gave my life to Christ. You know what I'm saying? Jesus really used her to bring me to the uh, kingdom of heaven. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I exposed myself to her. And then like uh, the beginning of this week or no, last week, I exposed myself on TikTok that I did this. And now I'm exposing myself on my YouTube platform that I did this, you know, and I have no problem doing this. I feel led to do this. I feel led to try to like encourage people and things like that. So I was really, really down and out, you know what I'm saying? Of course, after doing this, um, but like I said, it was December 29th and December 30th. Uh, and then I want to say like, maybe like January 1st. So like the first day of the new year, I like picked up my Bible and I was finna read my Bible with my mother and stuff like that. And, you know, soon as I opened up my Bible, this was uh, after I exposed myself to her too, or it might've been December 31st then if that's the case. I think it was December 31st. I opened up my Bible. As soon as I opened up my Bible, it's like I immediately heard the spirit of God talk to me and just say, this is what's going to save my life. This is what's going to change me. This is what's going to keep me out of temptation. This is what's going to keep me out of harm's way. It's the word of God. This is how you're going to continue to renew your mind and renew your spirit and, you know, um, made and, and be made a clean heart right you know what i'm saying these were the, the downloads that i was getting and it was very very powerful 
for me, you know, when I heard this, because it was just like, wow, like as soon as I opened the Bible, I just got all that revelation. And it made me start to feel better, you know what I'm saying? Because after you sin, you really feel like dirty, you feel disgusting, you feel away from God. Like sin does pull you away from God, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, God has a lot of grace, he has a lot of mercy. And if you are truly repented, and if you have a truly repentant heart, you know, he will have mercy on you, you know what I'm saying? But you have to truly desire to turn away from that, right? Now that was still recent, and but I'm still going to keep going in my faith. I'm still going to keep going on my walk. I'm not going to allow that to stop me. A lot of people actually will start something with God and then they will stop as a result of them sinning, as a result of them falling back with a certain female, as a result of them falling back into masturbation, as a result of them falling back into smoking weed. You have to, okay, if you're going, if you do that, if you make that mistake, you have to go back to God. You can't quit. It's, it's the trick of the enemy to make you feel like you're nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says there is no condemnation for the righteous, because condemnation is of the devil. Now, the job of the Holy Spirit is to convict you, which brings about the fear of the Lord when you feel convicted. I obviously felt convicted. I definitely did. I repented plenty of times, more than I even needed to. But I felt convicted, and I, and I kept asking God for the fear of the Lord. Like, that's my new prayer. Like, I really want such a fear in my body that like bro i feel like crazy if i'm about to sin like i feel like a madman you know what i'm saying like i want that type of fear for god like i just i'm gonna stay away from sin i want to stay out of the devil's playground as much as i can the best that i can through the name of jesus you feel me so anyways um i was praying uh probably like a few days later after you know i had that revelation when i opened up my bible and god had downloaded into me that there are three steps to deliverance and that I'm personally am still going through the third step. You know what I'm saying? I'm still going through the third step and I can be honest and open enough to say that. You feel what I'm saying? So the first step, the first step and the second step are interchangeable, meaning you can do the first step first or you can do the second step first and then the first step second. You get what I'm saying? Vice versa, right? So the first step is giving your life to Christ baptism receiving of receival of the holy spirit right and then the second step is the casting out of demons again you can you again cast the casting out of demons can happen first and then you can give your life to christ or giving your life to christ can happen first and then have the casting out of demons right but the third step which is the most um you know what i'm saying important step because it is the step that is going to uh keep you in right standing and continue your deliverance right upholding your deliverance because yes you can lose your deliverance the third step is re the renewing of your mind so you have to renew your mind okay i think i'm gonna make this into a two-part video a two-part series video you know what i'm saying because I'm just thinking about it right now and there's actually ways I can break this down more biblically, but I'm just not gonna do that in this first video. Um, you know what I'm saying? Cause I already got it set up how I wanna do it for this video. But the third step is the renewal of your mind, okay? So the thing is with that is, it's basically um, important for a Christian, right? To renew their mind. OK, because after you give your life to Christ, let, let's just let's just be real, real right here. Right. After you give your life to Christ, you still have the same mindset. It's just that you you've repented for your sins now. Right. And God has forgiven you. Christ has forgiven you like that. That works already done. But now comes the part where you walk. Right. The, the Bible says that the path is very, very straight and narrow. Right. But the, 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 the path to hell. Right. is very broad. Right. The path to destruction is broad. But this path is very narrow to make it right. So now is the part where you have to uphold yourself to a Christian. I mean, to Jesus' standard. Right. You know what I'm saying? And renew your mind. Uh, Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, like I was saying, when you first give your life to Christ, you are literally, you literally still have the same mindset. Then when the demons are casted out of you, they are casted out of you, meaning they no longer have that weight to tempt you, right? 
but that mindset that they left behind because remember your spirit is like your mind your in your heart your soul right you know what i'm saying so with that being said the 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 mindset that 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 they that they um basically developed inside of you, inside of you is still there so you have to renew your mind from worldly matters right the only way you can actually do that is by reading the word of god right the bible says in John 1 14, I believe that Christ, um, that the word of God came down, um, as flesh through Christ. So, so Christ is literally the word of God, you know what I'm saying? In his, in the fleshly form, that's how the word of God came down. So how can I learn Christ? You have to learn Christ through the word of God, right? And I'm talking about reading the, the, the whole thing, you know what I'm saying? Through, um, through, through, you know what I'm saying, the whole Bible, you know what I'm saying, just like letting it minister to you. Now, I haven't read the whole Bible. That, that'd that be pretty much like impossible for me, um, especially I haven't even been in this walk for a whole year. You feel what I'm saying? Um, but, you know, I read what the spirit tells me to read. You have to be spirit led, right? You have to be led on what God wants you to read in the particular season that you are in because then you will actually get something out of it for what you are for the season that you are in and you will learn the things that god wants you to learn for the season that you are in you get what i'm saying so uh, when i first came into this walk i was reading james and then i started reading all the gospels and stuff like that uh, i still need to read luke and then like now recently i've been reading like first corinthians second corinthians and then now i've been reading like the acts and at nighttime, I've been reading like Exodus and stuff like that. So I'm just like trying to get through the stuff that I feel led to read and things like that. So I can continue to walk in my journey. You know what I'm saying? Another way that you can really, really renew your mind is just being a doer of the word and not just a hearer. You know what I'm saying? Because the more that you develop doing the word of God, the more you will develop that fear of God, the more you will develop that fear of the Lord because you are doing you are walking in the things that God is telling you to do so with that being said when you really start following God and stuff like that he will put a tighter leash on you meaning um certain things that other people do that are Christians you won't be able to do because you're maturing in your walk so you have to be prepared for that like the fact that I masturbated and stuff like that like I know God forgave me for that and all that, bro. But you know what I'm saying? I really should be farther along than doing something, you know, that goofy. You feel what I'm saying? But it is what it is. You feel me? But like I'm saying, um, the three steps to deliverance, giving your life to Christ, the casting out of demons. And we all have the authority to cast out demons. According to Mark 16, 17 and 18, you know what I'm saying? Those who believe on the name of Christ shall cast out demons. You know what I'm saying? So you have to literally come into your authority by spending time with God, spending time in prayer. That is another way to renew your mind, spending time in prayer and spending time in the word of God. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm in a different place, you know, with my walk with praying and like reading the word of God. You know, I really try to do it a lot, a lot. You know what I'm saying? I really try, I pray a lot, you know what I'm saying? But if you are just now coming into your walk and things like that, then I would suggest um you should you should really really try to pray for at least like 15 minutes. And I'm talking about like when you praying like no distractions, like cut out all distractions for at least 15 minutes before you go to work, right? 15 minutes or before you go to school. Set a timer and just turn your phone upside down and just literally pray in the spirit to God. And if you don't have the spirit of God uh, living inside of you, then I would suggest that you read Acts 1 and 8 for 15 minutes. Thank God for 15 minutes. Um, you know, just shouting hallelujah for 15 minutes and believing that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Acts 1 and 8 says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Just keep re re reciting that, reciting that. For 15 minutes straight, you know what I'm saying? If you're really serious about your walk with Christ, then you can read the word of God for 15 minutes. So this is a total of like 30 minutes before you either go to work or before you go to school, or maybe try to do this after work or school. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be like those guys. I see a lot of people on like social media that tell you like, just start off with reading a chapter a day and things like that. If that's really where you're at, 
you know what I'm saying, then uh, go go do that, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's really where you're at. But let's just put this into perspective. You have all this time to be on social media. You have all this time, you know what I'm saying, to be on the phone with your homeboys or your home girls. You know what I'm saying? You have all this time to watch Jeffrey Dahmer on Netflix. You know what I'm saying? But you don't have you don't have 30 minutes for God. Like, actually put that into perspective. All you have for God is to read one chapter, like not even pray. It, it kind of irks me when people say that on social media, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like they're downplaying the walk with God. Just let, let, now, let's put this into perspective. How much Jesus Christ literally used to pray by himself, how he would go off and go pray by himself. This is Jesus Christ, the son of God. He even had a prayer life, a consistent one. He had to do a 40 day fast before beginning his ministry. Now, I understand that there are different levels. It's Jesus. He's on a whole nother level. But what I'm saying is put these things into perspective and just put praying and reading the word of God into real practice. You know what I'm saying? And be real with yourself. I believe everyone who watches this video has 30 minutes a day for God and God will continue to build on these things and he will and he will make it longer where you're going an hour of prayer. You're going two hours of prayer. You know what I'm saying? You're reading the word of God alone 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And you're giving God a tenth of your day as opposed to 30 minutes of your day, right? Let's reach for that type of goal. Let's reach for real renewal of our mind. And then we will see real deliverance and we will see a real transformation in the name of Jesus. But yeah, I hope that this video was a good encouragement and also a good um, I hope that, that you really uh, extracted something from this, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm giving, you know, what I believe to be some pretty good tips, you feel me? But like I said, I may I may make this into a two-part series. I'm not sure yet, you feel me? But yeah, uh, I just hope that you guys have a blessed and encouraged day. And I pray that this video was a eye-opener in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that, you know what I'm saying, everyone who comes across this video has a level of conviction to start spending more time with God in the name of Jesus I pray amen